Hello, I'm Stephanie Midori Komashin at Hokkaido University of Education, Asahikawa Campus. This is the basic university English flipped class lecture. In this lecture, we will go through different categories of the kind of English that you need to know, listen, speak, and write in the university setting, starting from instructor to student. Next, student to instructor and students to students in group work and pair work. Next, assistance when you need to ask for help from your instructor. And how to write polite email to your instructor. Finally, technology troubleshooting. Let's start from the first category, instructor to students, the kind of English that your instructor will likely say in the university classroom. To start class, the instructor might say, let's get started. This is the natural English. It is much more natural than to say, let's start. The instructor will often ask for volunteers to share your opinion or your answer, such as, any volunteers? Would anyone like to volunteer? Does anyone want to give it a shot? When you are doing group work or pair work in the class, you might have a time limit and the instructor will say, you have one more minute, time's up. Sometimes the instructor will explain what will happen next in the class or ask if students have any questions. Next, I'm going to, next, we're going to, here's an example. Let me give an example. Any questions? Does anyone have any questions? As a student, you will need to communicate to your instructor using phrases. But before we can look at them in detail, we need to know that language reflects culture. Language is a pattern of communication mutually understood by members of a group. And an important point about language is that language reflects culture. On one hand, Sometimes a person wants to express a feeling, a sentiment, a way of thinking, a concept from their own culture using words in another language. But that sentiment and way of thinking does not exist in the other culture. So in that case, it does not exist in the other language. On the other hand, sometimes the opposite is true. Sometimes a person assumes that elements of their language, their culture, their way of thinking, their way of feeling don't exist in another culture and another language. But sometimes those feelings, that desire to express also exists in another language. But the style might be very different than the style in your language. So in that case, Please learn the style of the other language so that you can express your feelings in the appropriate way. One of these is how to call instructors. In Japanese, you use the word sensei for many different kinds of people. For example, elementary school teachers, university professors, medical doctors, lawyers. Sensei is a very versatile word. But in English, we don't have this word. So it depends on each instructor what that person wants to be called. And you need to find out. If you're not sure, please ask the instructor, what would you like to be called? When the instructor tells you, then please follow the instructions of the instructor. If the instructor has a PhD, then please use doctor plus last name. This is the most standard, formal, polite, appropriate, and correct way to call any instructor who has a PhD, who has earned a doctorate. Also polite and formal and very good is professor. This is for any professor or associate professor in a university. Professor plus last name. And if you know for sure, absolutely, that the instructor does not have a PhD, in that case, 
Mr. plus last name or Miss plus last name, Miss, Mrs. plus last name. But if you are not sure if your instructor has a PhD or not, then you cannot use Mr. plus last name. That would be rude. Mr. plus last name is only if you are sure that he or she does not have a PhD. And if you're not sure, you can always ask, what would you like to be called? If the instructor is more casual and colloquial, that person might tell you to use last name only, or first name only, or a nickname. But this is only appropriate if the instructor gives you permission, if you are allowed by the instructor. Never call your instructor by last name only or first name only or a nickname unless you have received permission. There are some ways that Japanese students might want to refer to their instructor, but they are not correct in English. In Japanese, you can attach sensei as a suffix to a name. But in English, we cannot attach the word teacher as a suffix. Teacher is not a suffix, so you cannot add it to a first name or to a last name. Also, culturally inappropriate ways would be to say teacher by itself. In Japanese, you can say sensei by itself, but in English, we don't do that for university instructors. Maybe in kindergarten, or elementary school, maybe a student will say teacher, but we don't say teacher to university instructors. Also, we don't use Mr. plus first name or Miss plus first name for university instructors. This is a sound that we might hear for kindergarten teachers, but we don't use it for university professors. So, Please use doctor plus last name or professor plus last name. Or if you are sure that the person does not have a PhD, then you can use Mr., Ms., Ms., or Mrs. If you have received permission, you can use first name only, last name only, or a nickname. But please don't do that unless you have permission. And if you're ever in doubt, Every time you meet a new instructor, you can always ask, what would you like to be called? When you're in the classroom and the instructor has asked students to complete an assignment, you might like to say, we'd like to volunteer. When you are sharing your group's answer, you can say, our group has more than one answer. Some of us think, while some of us think, we'd like to volunteer. Our group has more than one answer. Some of us think, while some of us think, sometimes you need to ask for a request. Could we have one more minute to prepare? I'm sorry, we're not quite ready yet. Could you come back to us later? Could we have one more minute to prepare? I'm sorry, we're not quite ready yet. Could you come back to us later? Thank you for your patience. We are ready now. Thank you for your patience. We are ready now. Next category is group work and pair work assignments. When you're talking to your fellow classmates, please go ahead. I'll go first. Okay, who's next? Please go ahead. I'll go first. Okay, who's next? Sometimes Japanese students want to say, Ganbatte kudasai, but it depends on the situation which English phrase to use. If you're talking about the current assignment, the current group work or pair work, then you can say, give it a shot, go for it. But if you're talking about a quiz, a test, an exam on a future day, not now, then you can say, you can do it or good luck on your exam. Give it a shot, go for it. You can do it, good luck. At the end of your time in your group, you can say, would anyone like to add anything? 
or if you have time to drill again. Let's practice that again. Would anyone like to add anything? Let's practice that again. Sometimes you need to ask for help from your instructor. So phrases for assistance. Just to confirm, am I supposed to... What am I supposed to do next? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Just to confirm, am I supposed to... What am I supposed to do next? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. So this is natural English to use supposed to. Supposed to means should, subeki in Japanese. What you ought to do, what the instructor has instructed you to do. Your task, your assignment, what you are supposed to do. This is the natural way. It is better than should for natural English, polite English, and also natural English. So the most natural is just to confirm, am I supposed to... Please don't say, I want to confirm, what should I do? This is unnatural. Or, I want to check, what do I do? Also sounds unnatural. I should, shouldn't I? This is natural English, but it is very colloquial. It is for using with your friends or family, but not in a university context. So, I should, shouldn't I, would be like, I should study, shouldn't I? You can say to your friend, but you don't say to your instructor. So, to your instructor, just to confirm, am I supposed to? In Western cultures, we don't like to express if we don't know something. 100%. So, we say, I'm not sure, instead of, I don't know. I don't know is more strong. I'm not sure means maybe I understand 60% or 70, maybe 90%, I think I understand. But there's a little bit, maybe 10%, 5%, there's a little, I'm not sure, I don't know. But mostly I think I understood, but I need some help. This is I'm not sure. Now, I'm not 100%. This is the natural way. So, please say, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I should do is unnatural. I don't know what should I do. This is grammatically incorrect. I don't know what I do. This has a different meaning. I don't know what to do. This is correct grammar, but it is more casual and colloquial. Better for if you're talking with your friend. I don't know what to do. But when you talk to your instructor, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do is more appropriate. Sorry, could you say that again? Sorry, could you repeat that? Could you say that again more slowly? Could you say that again more loudly? Sorry, could you say that again? Sorry, could you repeat that? Could you say that again more slowly? Could you say that again more loudly? Could you explain that again, please? Could you explain the assignment again? Could you explain the homework assignment again? Could you explain that again, please? Could you explain the assignment again? Could you explain the homework assignment again? Could you give an example? Could you help me after class? Could you give an example? Could you help me after class? Is this correct? How do you say in English? How do you write? What does mean? Is this correct? How do you say in English? How do you write? What does mean? I'm not sure how to say it in English. I'm not sure how to say it in English. Next category. Sometimes you need to communicate to your instructor when you're not in the classroom together. In that case, you might be sending an email to your instructor. Previously, I explained that language reflects culture. And in some cases, a person might assume something that is true in their own language. 
doesn't exist in the other language, but maybe it does. This is true about polite speech. In Japanese, you have keigo. In keigo, usually you change the end of a word, or you replace a word with a different word. In English, we also have polite speech and polite writing, but the style is different. Instead of change the end of a word or replace a word, usually we insert, we add additional words to soften our sentence and make it less direct. Let's look at a sample email. First, please listen and read this email. Think about, is this email polite? Does it sound polite to you? Why or why not? Komoshin, can I register for Ibunka Rikai Ichi? I want to know today if I can take the course. Please reply to my email. I can't decide my class schedule if I don't know if I can take this class. Excuse me, can you reply? When I received this email, I thought this student is trying to be polite because the student used the words, please and excuse me. Usually, these are very polite words. Unfortunately, there is also some rude parts of this email. First, it says komoshin. It's yobiste. So, this is not polite unless I gave permission to the student to use last name only. And words like can and want are about the desire of the student, but in Western writing, in English, polite emails, we should express our concern about the situation of the recipient, in this case, the instructor, instead of focus on what we can or what we want. So instead of I can't, we think about what is convenient, what is possible for the instructor. And unfortunately, if you use excuse me in the middle of a sentence or at the beginning of a sentence, if it is in a longer sentence, then it becomes a kind of rude and colloquial way to express annoyance or impatience. Excuse me by itself is a nice set phrase, very polite when I need to move past or oh, I bumped you or oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Excuse me by itself is polite. But excuse me in a longer sentence has a different meaning. This excuse me is a kind of rude tone you could maybe use with your friend if you want to tease your friend. Like, excuse me, can you reply? It means I'm waiting and you're taking too long, please hurry, excuse me. This kind of excuse me always sounds rude. When I showed this sample email in a class that had an American international student, when he saw this slide in the PowerPoint presentation, he laughed out loud. Actually, when he read it, because this excuse me is in a longer sentence, he immediately knew in his head the kind of negative and rude tone it would have in English. So please be careful. Let's look at how to change this email into a polite email. What kind of phrases should you use? What are you supposed to do when you write polite email to your instructors? First, you can use greetings by itself or greetings and then the name of the recipient. Then introduce yourself. Explain who is sending this email. I am in your class. Greetings. I am in your class. And then explain what is the reason for your email. I imagine that you are very busy, so I'm quite sorry to bother you, but I would like to ask if, I would like to inquire about, 
I would like to touch base on the current status of. And then use many words and phrases of suggestion to soften your requests rather than writing directly. You may be aware that in Western culture, we are often much more direct in our expression compared to in Japanese culture and language. However, when we write polite email, we soften and we make our requests more indirect. So we can use words such as could, would, might, may, consideration, willing to, able to, if, possible, possibly, possibility, whether or not, hope, hoping, like to, and of course please. And we use words and phrases of appreciation because the instructor is considering our request. So we can say appreciate, grateful, helpful, lifesaver, kind, generous. At the end, we thank the recipient, in this case the instructor, for reading and considering the request in our email. If you could let me know as soon as possible, that would be most appreciated. Thank you very much for your kind consideration. If we use all of these ideas, of course, the email will become longer. But that is the English style. In Japanese keigo, you change the end of words or you replace words. Sometimes this makes the email longer. But you can copy and paste, set phrases, and use the words and phrases of suggestion to soften and appreciation. To correct the sample email that I showed you, we can use the different phrases and words that I showed you. Ms. Komushin, I imagine that you are very busy, so I'm sorry to bother you, but I would like to touch base on the current status of whether or not I may register for Ibunka Rikai Ichi. As the amount of time to decide my class schedule is growing short, I hope to know my schedule today. So if you could let me know as soon as possible whether or not I may take the course, that would be most appreciated. Thank you very much for your kind consideration. Let's look at another example. Think about, is this email polite? Why or why not? Stephanie Sensei, I have a doubt, so I will ask. I got the grade of F asterisk in Gaikokugo Ego Ichi. After I submitted my hospitalization certificate to you, I asked you to change the grade to D. However, I have trouble because the grade is still F asterisk. Please change it as soon as possible. I cannot re-register. Because of your sloppy response, I am involved in graduation problems. Please reply as soon as possible. When I received this email, again I thought maybe this student is trying to be polite because this student used please and possible. These are both good words for a polite email. Unfortunately, some of the other parts of the email are rude. Stephanie Sensei is not polite unless I already gave permission to use my first name. And doubt is always a negative word. Got is about me, the student, and I asked, and my trouble is a focus on the student instead of focus on request to the instructor and considering the instructor's situation. Also, you do not get a grade in a class. You earn your grade in the class. It is not the instructor who gives a grade to you. You do the work or you do not do the work and you earn the grade that you deserve in an ideal class. So you earn the grade, not you get the grade. In this email, it says, please change it. This is a kind of request, but 
it is a bit rude instead of asking if it is possible for the instructor to do what you want. This email can also be corrected using the phrases and words that we learned in this lecture. Here is the corrected version. Komoshin sensei, I would like to touch base on the current status of my Gaikokugo Ego Ichi grade. I earned the grade of F asterisk in Gaikokugo Ego Ichi. After I submitted my hospitalization certificate to you, you indicated that you would change the grade to D. However, the grade is still displayed as F, asterisk. I imagine that you are very busy, so I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm writing to ask if you might be able to change it as soon as possible. Currently, I am unable to re-register. Because of this situation, my graduation might be negatively affected. If you might possibly be able to give me an estimated time frame of when the grade will be changed, that would be most appreciated. Thank you very much for your kind consideration. In this corrected version, it includes the words current and currently. This gives the nice indication that I am describing the situation right now. When I log into the university website and I look at my grade, it is displayed in this way now, currently, at the current time. Maybe by tomorrow when you read this email, maybe the situation will be changed by then. At the time I'm writing, this is what I see when I look at my grade. And displayed means the website is displaying this grade. Maybe there could be a technical error that is not the fault or responsibility of the instructor. But when I look at it, this is what I see. So it is not accusatory. And the words, I am unable to, or this situation, are much more neutral. Actually, when I received this email from a student, I had already submitted the grade change form to the registrar of the university. After the registrar receives the form from me, it must be input into the university website, and the website must refresh overnight. So, at the moment that I submit the grade change form, it does not immediately change the grade displayed in the website. It might have a delay or take some time. The student didn't know that. And of course, I wanted to help the student to get the grade change as quickly as possible. But I had already done the part that I could do when I received this email from the student. Our final category is technology troubleshooting. For times when you are having an online class, you have a Zoom meeting, or you are using learning management systems of any kind, if you need to communicate with your instructor or other students through a virtual environment. Please wait a moment. My Wi-Fi seems slow. My internet is patchy. If you need to explain why you have a delay, why you are taking more time, please wait a moment. My Wi-Fi seems slow. My internet is patchy. Phrases for when you are troubleshooting audio issues. Can you hear me? Is my sound on? Yes, I can hear you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Is my sound on? Yes, I can hear you. I can't hear you. Could you check if your mic is on? Please unmute yourself. Could you unmute yourself? I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to unmute myself. Could you check if your mic is on? Please unmute yourself. Could you unmute yourself? I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to unmute myself. I'm sorry, you cut in and out. Could you say that again? I'm sorry, you cut in and out. Could you repeat that? Phrases for when you are troubleshooting video issues. I'm going to share my video. I'm going to turn on my video. Can you see me? 
Is my video on? Yes, I can see you. I can hear you, but I can't see you. I'm going to share my video. I'm going to turn on my video. Can you see me? Is my video on? Yes, I can see you. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Could you check if your webcam is on? Please share your video. Could you share your video? I don't think my video is showing. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to share my video. Could you check if your webcam is on? Please share your video. Could you share your video? I don't think my video is showing. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to share my video. I'm sorry, the video froze. Could you say that again? I'm sorry, the video froze. Could you repeat that? Phrases for troubleshooting screen sharing issues. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. I can't see your screen. It doesn't look like your screen is shared. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. I can't see your screen. It doesn't look like your screen is shared. Please share your screen. Could you share your screen? I don't think my screen is showing. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to share my screen. Please share your screen. Could you share your screen? I don't think my screen is showing. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to share my screen. In this flipped lecture video, we have learned many different kinds of categories of phrases and words to use for basic university English. Please use them in my class, in other classes, from other instructors. Also, if you travel abroad or study abroad, or if you interact with internationals who live in Japan or through the internet. Thank you.